calling here to show you some exercises to start to correct an excessive curve in your low back. So this excessive curve, it's really epidemic. And the number one cause of it is people that sit for a long period of time. So some of the things that we do sitting, the three C's, that would be computer, couch, car. So all those positions, a lot of times we tend to sit and we've got our legs bent and so they're um, up closer to our waist and as a result of that we start to shorten these muscles that primarily lift the leg up like so. They're called the hip flexors. So we're talking about the iliacus and the psoas. They attach on the inside of the front of the leg but then they run around the top of the hip and they attach to the front of the low back here. So what happens is when you go from a sitting position to a standing position because your pelvis tilts instead of that muscle stretching out your pelvis tilts more forward. And when that happens, you get more of a curve here. With more of a curve there, a few things happen. You start to get compression of the discs because the vertebrae are actually um, compressing those discs. So you get degeneration, bulging discs, things like this. Um, another thing that happens with that is the muscles through the front uh, of the abdomen, the rectus abdominis, or what we call a six-pack, that starts to weaken. And so that attaches to the pubic bone, which is part of the pelvis here, and when that weakens the, between these two spots, what happens is there's more of an arch. So we want to correct this, we want to open this area up through the hip flexors here, and we want to start to reverse this process. Because what happens is if this gets too excessive through the low back or it goes on for a long time, then the upper back, the upper spine starts to reflect it as well. It tries to compensate by creating an excessive curve forward with your head. So some of the other things you might be experiencing if you have this excessive curve, aside from low back pain, you might have neck pain from the head being more forward. You might also have a lot of tightness in through the front of your legs here because you're leaning more forward a lot of the time. And as a result, you're putting most of the weight here. So this is what we call quad dominant. And the muscles through the back of the body that actually help you to walk, to push off, they actually start to get weaker. So we want to work with this, all right? So the first thing that I would have you do is stretch out these hip flexors. And they're really important, especially if you're sitting a lot. So the easy way to do this would be to get down on the floor like so. You're going to be in kind of a, what we call a lunge position here, with uh, my weight evenly distributed between my front foot and my back knee. And this back foot I have turned inward, so it's facing the far wall here. The reason for that is that it starts to put a stretch right through here where we want it. Now from this position, what I'm going to have you do, and this is going to feel a little unnatural because you probably have uh, some tightness in through the low back as well, is what I'm going to have you do is tuck your butt underneath like you're tucking your tail. So this is going to feel strange at first, but I want you to do that as much as you can comfortably so we don't want you in pain. And then from that position, what you're going to do is slowly shift your whole trunk of your body forward. So you're going to bend this front leg a little bit more and start to put more weight on the front leg. As you do this, you should start to feel a good stretch through the front of the thigh and up through the hip flexors right in through here. So you're going to take this forward until you feel that great stretch. Don't overdo it. We don't want to injure anything. And then if you want to create a little bit more stretch, you would point your hand straight forward and you would lift it up and you would reach up toward the ceiling with it. Now ideally you want to hold this stretch for about a minute on each side and that will start to loosen up these hip flexors. That's going to allow us to do the next exercise which is pelvic tilting. A lot of times people with this low back issue they tend to get a lot of compression in here but also the muscles start to lock up and they lose the ability to rock their pelvis back and forth. So in order to correct that and in order to correct the pelvis so that we can rock it backward we need to loosen it up. So I'm going to have you lay down on the floor like so, feet bent, feet flat, or legs bent, feet flat on the floor. From this position, you're going to use your tailbone as the fulcrum. And what I'm going to have you do is take a deep breath in. As you do, you're going to be breathing into your belly, so you're going to actually arch your back as you do this. You take a, I'll put my hands up here so you can see. Take a deep breath in, and then as you breathe out, you're going to tilt your pelvis back or tuck your tail under 
as if you're trying to flatten your back to the floor. So in and out. And you're going to do this about 10 times just to start to loosen it up. Then after you've gotten some movement going in there, I'm going to have you do when you breathe out. So after you, breathe, you have that breath in and you go to breathe out, I'm going to have you imagine bringing this pelvis, this pubic bone here, up toward your sternum. So you're actually going to tighten and contract through your rectus abdominis, your abdominal muscles here. I'm going to have you contract that and hold it for three seconds. Moderately contracting it, not super tight. Then you're going to let it relax as you take a deep breath again. Arch that back. Breathe out. Contract. Hold for three seconds. This is going to start to work this muscle while at the same time getting your low back to get some movement in it. So these are very important uh, exercises so far. Now, people that have this issue a lot of times have weakness in through their glutes, uh, and particularly the gluteus maximus, the big muscle of the butt, because they've learned how to walk in kind of a modified uh, manner in which they tend to take a shorter step. And when they take a shorter step, what they lose is what we call hip extension. The ability to push off from that back foot and include the glutes and the hamstrings to create forward momentum for walking. So instead, they replace it by just keeping their foot flat and lifting the leg up and putting it back down. This creates more tension and more tightness and more overwork through these hip flexors. So one thing I want you to do is I want you to practice with one leg forward fairly decent uh, gap here. So if you're used to taking short steps, make it a little bit wider and you can grab onto anything that you need to to stabilize yourself in your environment. From this position, what I'm going to have you do is get used to pushing off that back foot. Get used to bending that back foot and putting the weight onto the front leg here and then swinging the next leg through. I want you to practice walking back and forth in your house a little bit like that few minutes a day is going to be really helpful. What this is going to do is it's going to start to open more and more of this up and get these muscles to fire a bit. Okay? Now the last thing that's very important is awareness. It's postural awareness. So in order to exercise that, all you really need to do is several times throughout the day, I want you to close your eyes and see if it feels like your body's falling forward. People that have a forward tilted pelvis feel like they're kind of falling forward. They have a very hard time standing up straight. So I've taught you how to stretch out here, move the pelvis, so you can start to get some mobility in through your low back. And we've worked on strengthening the muscles here that will also help to pull the pelvis into a more neutral position. Now we want to add awareness to this so that you can check in and when you find that it feels like you're falling forward, you're going to imagine there's a string attached to the top of your head and elongate your whole spine. And as you do this, you're going to feel a couple of things. You're going to feel your rib cage rise up. You're going to feel some pulling in through your abdominal area, which is perfect, because that means it's going to start to pull and even out your pelvis. So you're going to do this. And you'll also feel your shoulders naturally drop back. And you'll feel more balance between your two feet as opposed to feeling like you're falling forward. So there's just some tips in order to try and get you to undo the excessive curve in your low back and start to move you back toward health and muscular balance.